So what I really want is to be here, opposite of this cup. So instead of throwing the thrust that makes sense for thrusting, I might throw that thrust with my hand because I'm already trying to align the edge already aligned for the cut I want to make, not for the thrust. So the thrust means nothing. It's just a way of setting myself up to throw the cup that I want to thrust. It's an awkward thrust, but it's a great setup for the shot. Um, this leads us to something that came out of a, a book on, uh, on uh, sleight of hand competitions. They're, they talk about magic misdirection. The idea is, if you need to do your magic trick, if you need to do something um, for the mechanics of the trick, you need to move this ball from here to here. That's essential that it happens. Um, and you don't want us, your audience to see that. You have to cover it with another action. It can't just be any action. It has to be an action that makes sense to the observer, an action that has an explanation, that they go, they move that way because, and they think they have an answer to that because. It's not the right answer. You're, you're concealing something that you're doing is essential to the trick. So it's the same for your fighting. You need to do something to set up your next blow. Um, they need to see it as a movement that, mean, that makes sense to them, but doesn't tell them the important information of what you're actually doing. So, like that false thrust, setting up the cut, I mean, it seems like a perfectly rational thing for you to have done, and it just happens that they block it with it, you flood or aim. Um, but, but it's actually setting up the, uh, the cut. The reason it works is because that thrust, when, when you finish that thrust, to them, that interaction is over. They know why you did it, they think, because they want to come from the tip of the weapon. They know what came of it, it failed. Story over. But for you, it's just setting up the cut. Advantages of a 
static defense is it limits your opponent's options to attack. It's always on. Um, the disadvantages are that it forces your opponent to reach into hard to block zones for their attack. And it allows your opponent to size up your defensive preferences and often your offensive preferences. So if I've got, say, a heater shield here and I'm like this, I've got a lot of passive defense. Uh, even if I fall asleep here, they can't hit the front of my body. They can only hit a tiny bit of my leg. They can't hit the front of my helm. Uh, they're going to have to reach the side of my helm. I've got a lot of, a lot of defense just because of the way I'm standing. Um, so that attacks the defense. Um, but my opponent, because I'm doing this, they're not going to throw a home ball like this. They're going to throw a home ball like that, right? They're going to try to get over this guard or whatever. Or they're going to throw some complicated thing, try to drop me out of position and throw. They're going to do something tricky that's harder for me to block because I've got so much cover already. So there's the downside of having a strong guy to the best. Um, and it has, it has to be tired to hold as well. So an active defense is moving to the blocking position while being attacked. The advantages of an active defense are it encourages your opponent to strike at easy to block targets. Why would I throw this? But if you just smack them, the block is as easy as this. Um, it keeps the exact nature of your block and the potential repose from it a surprise. Um, so it matters whether, and we'll go back to this a little bit, but it matters whether I block like this or like this. Um, because from here, I can throw this shot. From here, I can throw that shot. So the kind of block that I make determines what my next move is likely to be. Um, and because I'm not in a blocking position to begin with, they don't know which of those blocks I'm going to use, therefore they don't know which repos I'm going to use. Whereas if I'm here, they know that after the block, my life is going to be the shot. Um, the, uh, the disadvantages of an active defense is that you're open until you move the block. Um, so if someone's much faster than you, um, they can hit you, even though you made it quite a block. Uh, and even worse, if you're caught on a rare, you will really be hit. Because uh, <laughs> you're doing nothing, you're leaving it all hanging out there. Uh, so those are two big disadvantages. Um, examples of static blocking are everywhere. Um, even, even someone who fights like this has some static blocking going on. They've eliminated most of the leg and body as a target. They've really made the fight from here up. Um, so even though they've got active defense from here up, they've simplified their lives by really getting all this other stuff covered. They don't have to think about that other stuff. All they have to think about is what's now over. Um, so you'll see varying degrees, and you can use varying degrees of active versus passive form. It's that active versus passive form. Um, my recommendation is to not overdo the static block. Um, don't try to always cover every target area. Instead, use active blocks to deal with known openings, and think about how you can use those active blocks to set up your next job. Um, which is what we're moving on to next. Um, active sword blocks can have several variants, one of which is striking at the blow that's coming at you. It's pretty clear to see how striking at the blow coming at you could result in tying it to our offensive figure eight, right? Since so we've already determined that throwing a blow, we can continue the motion into another blow. Um, we can see how that block could lead to that. So here comes the shot. I throw it down to figure eight. I interfere with the shot. Continue to figure eight into another shot. Or I throw it uh, down to figure eight. Make the block, and it's stuck dead, just as strong, bounce back along the figure eight, return into another shot. Um, the throwing a blow into their blow, clearly it can be, it can be directly into your, into your repo, so you don't have to be set before throwing them in your shot. Uh, another way of dealing with an attack is receiving the blow by the sword uh, by moving it into its path. So that's more the classic hand block the shot kind of block. Um, if you, if you intersect their sword by putting your sword somewhere along your figure eight pattern, though, um, you can move fluidly from that block into another blow. So 